Now, while seeing your heart out can give you a lift, it can also create a crisis. One aspiring artist knows this all too well. I'm a vocalist and singing has been my passion for nearly as long as I can remember. This spring I had the opportunity to perform in Tokyo, Japan, but unfortunately I got really, really sick. Soon enough my voice sounded like screeching brakes and turns out I had nodes on my vocal cords and was sent home two months early. Okay Rachel, so this is that nodule we talked about when you came in August. You see how this vocal cord is perfectly smooth and it's supposed to be pearly white? And now this one, as it goes, you see that little tiny red nodule, and that's a little bump or callus. And then from the friction on that nodule, you had just a micro drop of blood. And when it hemorrhaged, that's what made you not able to sing anymore. So what we're gonna do is look at Rachel's voice box using the video stroboscope. I'm gonna ask you to do a couple of different things. Start with a low voice and go all the way up high to where you go up high. Excellent. It looks really good, like you've made a full recovery. I think you're going to sound fantastic, and I think it's only going to get better from here because your vocal cords are actually stronger and you're training the voice muscles to do better and better. Awesome. I'm so excited. Thank you. Joining us in studio are Dr. Sean Nassari, Rachel's otolaryngologist, and Rachel. Welcome to both of you, Dr. Thank Nassari. You so when this all started, you were put on complete voice rest, right? Yeah. For how long? For a total of three weeks overall. Wow. So show us what you found on Rachel's stroboscopy. So what we're looking at here is the voice box. We're looking at the vocal cords. And if we look here and here, these are the vocal cords themselves. So when you're looking down at the voice, these two little guys that are actually less than an inch on each side in a young lady make all the voice. And then a tiny little nodule that's a little over a millimeter right here makes all the difference in the I world. Mean, so in her case, the treatment was voice rest. Voice rest. We also did a lot of other things where we did a lot of what we call vocal hygiene. Lubricating his, her voice, like you said for Mr. Navarro, drinking plenty of water, using medicines that actually break up mucus, things that are similar to Robitussin or Mucinex. And then we also have them use the correct vocal technique. Okay. Because it's like when you run or you walk, if you turn your foot in or out a couple of inches, after a couple of miles, it makes a big difference. So it's training her voice to be much better. Okay. And what happens if this is left untreated? Well, then it becomes a disaster. So it can go from that to something significantly bigger. Wow. Where you see... You can see that difference immediately. One little tiny dot opens up a blood vessel right here, and you can just shadow next to it where this is someone who is consistently singing on tour, couldn't take a break, and then it can go from that to something even much bigger. And this young lady was singing a lot, was actually screaming a song, and came up with this, where you can see basically two-thirds of her vocal cord and 99% of her voice were gone. And this person we actually had to take off tour and have them do a number of things to rehabilitate their voice and bring her back. This is an example of someone who is a Broadway singer who mm. ran into trouble, who kept not following or listening to her body to the point where she actually ended up with a nodule that's so big it's even hard to see separate wow. from the voice box itself. Because you can see this is the length of the vocal cord on the other side, mm -hmm. and here's the length of the vocal cord around this nodule, and this nodule is three quarters of the vocal cord, and she had absolutely no voice, had to take over a month off and I actually had to and surgically surgery, remove it. Correct that. Exactly. All right, well, thank you very much, Dr. Nassari. Mm -hmm. And Rachel for sharing your node with us. And before we leave, can you give me a little high C? Well, sure. <laughs> Something like, ah. She's got the high C, all right. <laughs> Good job. <laughs>